guys, I hope you're doing well today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kristen Gorder and I am Director of Connections at Emergence. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick reminder to tune into the Good Friday service live on Facebook at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And then Easter morning Sunday, we will be live on Facebook at 9 a.m., 10.15 a.m., and 11.45 a.m. Speaking of Easter, the passage I'm going to be talking about is Isaiah 53, 5, and it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. I referenced this passage a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to dive a little deeper into this text and look at what it means for us today. So I have a scar on my thumb from a cooking injury as a kid and a scar on my knee from a bike accident years ago. Everyone has scars, whether they're physical, mental, or emotional, scars happen with life. There's a whole industry around the removal of scars, which tend to be seen as unsightly or even ugly. But I find it interesting that Christ's resurrected body still had wounds from the nails and sword. In John 20, it tells us that Thomas didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the dead until he touched Christ's scars. Jesus could have risen with a perfect body, entirely without blemish, but instead he chose to keep the marks of his torn flesh. Why? I believe it is because it is his wounds that make him our Savior. Without them, if Christ never went to the cross, we would have no hope. 1 Peter 2.24 says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. In Luke, after Christ appears to the disciples, he explains to them that the Christ should suffer on, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Tomorrow is Good Friday, the day that Christ was beaten, shamed, and executed. But he didn't go through that suffering without purpose. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Every scar I have, whether physical or emotional, has a story attached to it and shapes the person that I am today but it is because of Christ's wounds that I have life. My prayer for you this weekend is that your eyes would be open to these truths and that no matter what you are going through this very moment, it would fade in the light of the work that Christ did for you on the cross. For those of you who are Christians, I want to encourage you to live like you're alive in Christ. His mission for us was and is to make disciples who make disciples. And guys, we live in a world that is craving for hope, and we have it. What would it look like for you right now in the 2020 COVID reality to make disciples and to live in a way that proclaims the glory of God? For those of you who aren't sure what you believe or if God is even real, I want you to ask yourself, what if this is all true? What if Jesus really is God, really walked this earth, really died on the cross for your sins, and was raised from the dead? What would that mean for your life? Look, this is hard. We have all been affected by the collective trauma that we're experiencing right now. And I am sure that our lives will continue to look different because of it. But I want you to remember that no matter what scars or wounds you carry, there is no one who, there is one who took the worst of them. It is by his wounds that you were healed.